Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of the Coin Republic. You know in every episode we come up with someone special and talk about crazy things happening in the world right now. So today I have a very fantastic individual with me. He's the founder and a creative director of Apology. Now if you're wondering what Apology is, wait, we're going to talk about it. Apart from that, we're going to talk about a lot of exciting stuff like the NFTs, the metaverse, and decentralized social media. So please help me welcome Joe Ray. Joe, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you, Aksha. Very, uh, very ha happy to be here and, uh, and with Coin Republic as well. Thank you for the invite. Fantastic. Joe, I have, was looking at your LinkedIn profile and I was impressed with the kind of experience you've had in the industry. You know, 33 plus years of a tremendous career. So before we talk about topology, I would love to know a little bit about your journey. What made you who you are today? Uh, I like to say uh, the, the school of hard knocks in production. Uh, I, I always wanted to be in the film business from being uh, in high school. I was always the guy who designed this, the stage plays and the, you know, mostly to get out of class for a couple hours earlier or something. No, not, it, you know, just to be artful. I went to a tech school in high school, which uh, allowed us to, you know, build build half of the day in shop in like cabinet making, carpentry, or machine drafting, all this type of stuff. And then the rest of the day was academic. But um, I got involved in the in doing stage design, not realizing that set design or production design was an actual career. Uh, my mom was one of the first dancers of American Bandstand in 1955. Wow. One of the first dancers. And um, so she ingrained this creative catalyst in my, in my brain early on and supported my illustrations and designs and, you know, and, and just would kind of coach me this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I excelled in that and then uh, went to the Art Institute of Philadelphia uh, for a brief stint, uh, I had to drop out for financial reasons, and I was traumatized. I was like, oh, this is the end of my life. You know, I was like nine, 18 years old then, or borderline 19. And I saw a movie set going on in Philadelphia. Actually, it was um, Mannequin, Mannequin, maybe the first Mannequin? Yeah, because I worked on Mannequin 2. I worked on the second one, but the first one was shooting in Philadelphia. And I'm like, I want to do that. And they had the, you know, the police line tape and you, you know, just, you know, and everybody's watching. I'm like, I want to be there. I don't want to be on this side of the tape. I want to be on that side. So uh, Philadelphia at the time was a kind of a sea market film town on its way up. And, uh, and, and I remember my, my landlord that I was living at uh, had worked in city hall and recommended that I go to visit uh, the film commissioner of uh, every city has their own film, film commissioner to bring right. projects to the, to the city. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did that. I followed up. And, um, and, and meanwhile, I had a little bit of experience doing working in theater, doing stage design part time, trying to get my, my, my chops. And I talked to Big Game and he's like, well, you should probably do an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. and work for free. And I'm like, okay, great. This is going to be a long haul. So uh, I worked, I, I managed to get an internship with uh, my, my dear mentor, first mentors, um, Ellen Shire and Garrett Brown. And you'll mm -hmm. know Garrett Brown's work from uh, Rocky, all the Rocky series and The Shining. The guy is the inventor and creator of the Steadicam that I got to be uh, an apprentice for 
it, and, and learned the ropes and they put me in craft services and I was horrible at it because I was more interested in what the art departments were doing. So they fired mm -hmm. me there and put me in with the art department for an M&M's commercial I was working on. And um, I got to work with a great production designer named Vince Peranio, who mm -hmm. happened to be the production designer of the old uh, John Waters films, um, uh, Hairspray and all this type of stuff. So he's a decent production. He'd come from Baltimore to shoot these in Philly. I'm like, why are they bring in a production designer from Baltimore all the way to Philly, right? Not knowing, of course, he's a classic and powerful designer, but I'm like, is there anybody here that can do it? And there are good names of designers here. Uh, Norm Dodge and Steve Davis at the time, and Jesse Rosen, Rosenberg and different guys. And um, they were very well in their careers. And I printed up $40 business cards and said, I can do this. And lo and behold, I, I did. I got a job at WHYY Public Broadcasting and did a couple little show uh, shows there. I got an apprenticeship uh, also with the Walnut Street Theater, helping build their stages for the, uh, for the actual big stage. And I excelled to learn about backdrops and lighting and all this great stuff. And, and then, uh, you know, I, I basically connected through the years with a, with a company that, that was uh, uh, this gentleman, who's still a friend of mine, uh, Stuart Levy, who was designing a film studio in Philadelphia. And here I'm like 19 years old, 19, border close to 20, but not quite. And he's building a film studio of a utopian space of, of every, production and everything. And I meet him in a nightclub and, and he's a magician and all this cool stuff. And I introduce myself. I had a little bit under my belt because of Garrett Brown, who's a big celebrity for filmmaking. So he gave me a shot to work with him and his company to help build and launch the film studio which we did. And then I got my big brain because he had a seemingly infinite pocket to uh, financially. So I said, well, why don't we build a film studio or I'm sorry, why don't we build a scene shop next door? Mm. And then you have the film stage and then you have the, you know, the, the set shop. And there was, that was no, nothing like that in Philly at the time. In fact, there wasn't really a lot, there wasn't really packaged film, film design with the soundstage as a commonplace. Today, it's a lot more common. And it was very uncommon back then, and we're talking like 89, 90, where a, a production designer would take the entire budget that the commercial production had and, and, and spend it on whatever, you know, whatever you could pull up. It would always be you hire the designer, you hire the builders, and the production company would allocate the funds. Well, so I convinced a, a few clients uh, that trusted our process and um, or took a risk on our process actually, because I didn't have like that big of a career. Uh, clients like uh, my friend, Ed Buffman, who's a great commercial cameraman director, uh, uh, Jeff Berry and Jim McGorman from a company called SBK Pictures at the time. They were like the, they were like the high end Disney or Spielberg of Philadelphia at the time <laughs> doing the best commercials and such. So they hired us for lots of, good work and we built a, a pretty good claim to our names for building and shooting and um and having the set stop set, set shop right next door so you could work all night for you know 10, 10 hours a day 40 hours a day if you wanted to to build the scenery in the studio so we own the studio so we we're able to put more into the art department so this process uh escalated and then I, I, I saw music videos at the time MTV was actually playing music videos and they would put the name of the director and the production companies and all that so I would track the who directors are doing the best work and at the time there was a guy uh, Marcus Nispel who I loved his work for Faith No More and George Michael and just great just in, in, incredible work uh, Lionel C. Martin was uh, doing a lot of the R&B and hip hop videos at the time. And uh, actually it was right before hip hop. It was really broke because I go back to where they, the New Jack Swing era, like they called it, you know, um, Boys to Men was technically my first music video, Motown Philly. And, uh, and that video just blew us up. And, you know, so then Lionel C. Martin, who directed that video, took me with him to direct other projects like uh, Tony Braxton, TLC, 
you know, and then he, he fostered a young guy named Hype Williams, who's that fisheye director who did the big, you know, popular, uh, I say Populux rap videos that are just supreme. Hype can get any, anyone, the ton, no matter how tough you are, he can get rappers to do anything. So long story short, the career building on top of these great directors who mentored me and gave us a, a chance out of Philly to build things for a better price technically than New York or, you know, and then, uh, then I was working by coastal uh, from LA and, uh, and Philadelphia, New York, uh, which grew even bigger. So, I mean, it was a, a long process of just being around some of the best directors. I worked with um, Martin Scorsese where I got to, you know, watch his process where we were the hosting house for uh, Age of Innocence, 12 mm -hmm. Monkeys with Terry Gilliam. I was on the outside of that with, we would lease out some of our crew to that, to the prospects. So I was able to be on set watching Hollywood in our backyard. And it's a phenomenal wow. thing to watch. You know, it's, it's simulation. You know, we're, you know, you, you look at the snowflake or the cosmos and there's, the, there's patterns that are all the same. And filmmaking is, 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 is in a sense acting like a human God to create the environments that you have control over. Right. right. So I, I guess I'm a, I'm not a control freak. I'm a director freak. I love to direct. I love that. No, yes. So there you go. That's, that's how it all started. And I love the business of storytelling. Right. And I think this is what I absolutely love about this, this part of my job. You know, I get to listen to stories of so many exciting people and so many talented people. So kudos to you on your journey. I think that has been a really exciting one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Akshat. Now talking about topology, now I want to understand from you, what is topology and how is it transforming the world in a creative way? That's a great question. And I like how you prose it in the, in the current because 90, 98% of the people, actually more than that, I'll say even 99% of the people don't know about popology. You know, if, if I've got 10,000 people that know about it, that's still nothing, right? But popology is everywhere. Pop the, uh, yeah, how often in a day do you smile? Okay, so popology is the formula of what it takes to get a smile on your face, the formula. Now, only you really know that, right? And, mm -hmm. and all, you know, I have my formula and we all have, now sometimes our formulas overlap. Sure, that's consensus and that is mass popular. Yet individual popular is not heralded or ledgered in today's world. Uh, it's beginning. It is beginning because this whole NFT craze and the blockchain and, and the creativity that is for the first time we can account for something without the, the fear of, um, of corruption, right? And I don't mean that in any other way than that is that, you know, you can't mess with the blockchain, right? So it's, you know, right. it's solid. So, so ledgering true popular by and for the people is more than noble, is it because popular exists no matter whether we're here or not. The, 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 the popology idea started when they invented the wheel. Well, that's cool, man, right? What's that? Well, right. it was right in front of us the whole time. So, you know, in societies, we've always had inspiration and someone carries the idea to a fruition to create a smile of someone else, or it is even more broad uh, or in an abstract way, which is like you and a buddy talking about a movie you like and the song lyric you 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 connected to. Right. This is you expressing your popology, your formula of what you're drawn to. 
this, this conversation dynamic is essential to, to celebrate. And so many times in today's world, we put this away. We're, we're told by, and I don't mean this negative to grandparents because my grandparents were supportive, but grandparents were, or you're going to be responsible. You can't enjoy yourself all the time. <laughs> you know? And I say, that's not correct. The Rolling Stones song is so depressing. You, you can't get what you, you, wait, you can't always get what you want. If you work hard enough, you can you know, so, right. so the ideation of popology has always been here. We're just giving a word to it. There is a science to popular. And I say this in a, in a wrap up of the, of, the, of the question. Popular in singular is the closest to belief system, right? Because, right. you know, it's you, it's your thought, a belief system, the singular mm -hmm. uh, religion, if you will, or belief in mass popular is science, right? So right. science, popular in mass appeal or mass communication is science because we count on it. So mm -hmm. guess what? Popology is the only word that means belief system and science system, okay? Popular oh. is, a, is, a, is a word that we can't take out of our vernacular. It will always be there. Pop is one of the most... Um, powerful forces on the in the earth and it encompasses doctrine religion faith god uh politics iconography everything it's everything and so to encompass this concept was such a mission that's why uh since 2001 is the inception of this two weeks before the not american 9 11 issues and i took this as a sign from a bigger force that I'm being puppeted to bring this to the world in a way that will uh, uplift and level the playing field of, 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 of uh, people's participation in large corporate kind of ideas and, and allow democracy to, to flow in the actions of everything instead of being angry that someone's wealthy or angry that there's power. I, there is a human element to power and I right. acknowledge that, you know, yet, what popology can do is deputize everyone to be a popologist, and that's a corporation of the self. So, so media literacy is essentially what I've dedicated popology to be. The, um, we have a, a, a fair use license. It's trademark for, um, for you know, uh, and, and so it's a whole brand of trademarks we have, but popology is media literacy that focuses on confident self-expression and, 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 you know, and media literacy. And blockchain right. is media. Every, every, uh, the Bible and the, the Torah and the Kabbal are, uh, Kabbalah are all um, books, literature, media. Right. So there isn't much that isn't inclusive of what, there isn't anything that doesn't include what popology is as a, as a human-made asset to organize our lives and celebrate what we're already doing right mm. you know Interesting. I, it's, it's so much it's like i could just yak 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 about how <laughs> big this inflated balloon is but it it's um you know and 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 you know when it pops when popology plop pops if you will obviously being deployed among all the people when we have global inner peace and i mean that I, I, the, the goal, the agenda with popology is, and I, you know, what that really means is, I, it's not for me to say, I'm not here to dictate what is popular and what isn't. We all are. It's different for everyone. Completely. And that's what's celebratory. That's what's great about it. And, 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 you know, the, the, the strength part is there are some things we're not going to like. Okay. There are some agendas out there. I'm not really a fan of. Yet I'm not here to limit it. I'm here to hear it out. I'm, and and mm -hmm. really what's really the important is for us to have safe zones to communicate this information right. and, and allow people to express themselves in safety instead of these shrouded, dark scenarios. And, you know, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a light to popology and it also embraces the darkness as well is very much a yin yang 
uh, lifestyle, you know, and, and it's, it's just got, it's got a lot go of good going with it. The intention is to uplift, inspire, and validate, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, did I answer your question? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so when I was researching about topology, uh, what I could understand is topology is more of a decentralized social media where I can share things I want without being worried about whether it will be removed as as per the per, a central authority or something. So what I understood is that it's a decentralized social media where everybody wins. The creators, okay. the curators, the people who are consuming the content. Yeah. And those who are into advertisements, everybody wins. And I found that fascinating because when you see traditional YouTube or any traditional social media, only the creators win. Consumers win in a way, but when it talked about earning, that is where I found out that this is really fascinating. Can you elaborate how can a content consumer earn from this? It's a big question you just answered, asked there, and you partly answered it too, so I love that. Um, well, first of all, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I got a little bit of an advantage as a personal guy in the sense that I, I've been a director to create and shape pop culture media and, and had a pretty good stake in it for, for my scale, you know, made bigger directors out there that are doing great jobs. I worked Thank for you. Joseph Kahn, by the way, for Backstreet Boys. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but. <laughs> a baby that brought into the internet. So I, it wasn't here when we used cell phone, we didn't use cell phones. So, you know, we, we came into it where the internet was being created. So what popology really represents is the, is the, is the uh, which also 3.0 does as well, web 3.0 as a, as a concept of the, of the new web coming, right. is more of what the original web, web internet was supposed to be. Now, mm -hmm. the adoption for everyone's use cases it took a long time. And then the big inventors came up with Google and Facebook and MySpace and, right. and, and, and YouTube, which I love. I love these platforms. They created such a utility for everyone that they took everyone's data and say, OK, this is what you do with it. So they've shown us some great lessons. Um, and then now we're in this metaverse that's, that things are, are growing, which is great because we're all in the same thinking. So I've been in the same thinking for decades, knowing this was coming. And that's where mm -hmm. popology has been invented. So, so, so essentially, I invented the concept of a platform. My partner, Dan Rush, as well, I have a, the best partner in the world. He is, uh, he's a director at Comcast as well. He works at, um, he has his own pay-per-view live events streaming service company. And he's an excellent media mogul, the, uh, a kind and gentle partner, strong when he needs to be. And he lets me be a little bit of a wild card when I need to be. But he also, you know, he, he directs the shots very well. And I'm just very grateful to him. Uh, we innovated this platform to um, seed a centrifuge of all of it. Because uh, let me give you an example. If, if, if you, you know, we're all healthy here, thank God. If you, if you had cancer, cure for cancer, you'd be all over Google looking for the answer, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you wouldn't stop there. You would look at Yandex, right? And you'd go to Bing and you'd go to all these search. We go wherever you could, right? You'd be looking right. at everything. Well, guess what? Try this experiment. Open up five windows and pick a search browser for each one, and then do a video search for each one of those platforms. Now, again, I love Google. Google's my go-to, and I love Yahoo. Love it, too. Mm -hmm. Bing is cool, too. Yandex, love Yandex because it's Chinese-driven, and, it, and their, their search query for that search is 
holistic medicines and, and, and uh, naturopathic approaches on the top search queries, okay? I'd have to go to page 500 or something to get the Western, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I've done that. But in other words, each platform has their own uh, sanctified agenda or corporate sponsors that they, they identify with. That's their right. That's what they do. They're building it. We got it for free. Hey, right. it's a great source. So I'm not complaining here. But the media literacy of the reality is, if you really want to find what your truth is, you need to do the research on all platforms. Mm -hmm. And okay, fair enough. So Popology enables this um, information campaign to be happen instantaneous. So if you've got 2,400 tiles populating from five or six, we, we, we aggregate 10 platforms at once for free, 25 for super users. You immediately get all the information you want and you can choose what it is for you. That's the point of, you know, the, and so, so branded strength is something to, to be uh, excited about. It's also something to be careful about or to be uh, concerned about because, you know, and, and I love Nike, Adidas is my personal brand. Um, but Nike will say for all day, it's the best sneaker in the world and the, and the most iconic logo, which it could be. Mm -hmm. Yet the point is, what happens when the people answer that question? Right. The people, it doesn't mean they haven't asked everybody, but what's, what about a blockchain that tracks all the use cases for every single person, but we have access to it. See, the, mm -hmm. our CIA has it and our, and I'm glad our government tracks this stuff, but I don't see it. I would like to see it. Now, now agencies pay Facebook 15 to $18 per report of everyone on that platform to decide um, who likes uh, uh, Velcro more than shoelace tie-ups, right? So, nice. so they're, they're, they're charging the data. And again, that's their right. That's what they're in business for. Thanks. I watched uh, Zuckerberg in the Senate hearings and he just said, this is our business model and we're not changing it. I was excited about that. You know why I was excited about that? Because right. now Pathology is offering something that no one else will. Okay. And I'm not saying there's platforms out there that will offer you to pay data in the background of your computation. I have a, 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 a one app that I do photo editing on. And they, they say we keep our app on in the background to serve you ads better or something, right? Right. That's a photo app. <laughs> That's a photo app. That's not even the social media. That's not, everybody's doing this, right? Right. And so what we're creating is the media literacy experience to say you're merchandising your own data and we're going to make sure you get paid for it too. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a model. How much do you pay for your internet bill personal? Personal internet bill per month. Just give me a number. So in INR, I pay around 1,000 INR. You pay 1,000? Okay. So with a Popology membership, free using say make one popcast now 1000 might be what like 30 bucks a month in the us or something or i don't know maybe 60 i don't know we're gonna we're gonna our goal is to pay at least half of your internet bill at least half just mm -hmm. by following the, the process of building one popcast because what it is is you're merchandising your data right. and the, the workspace that we've assembled enables this activity, but not just working in the background while you do all the things you do. We're actually giving you the forefront workspace to say, what are you doing on the internet? What do you care about? And while you create this podcast, this curated stream of media, these are being ledgered for digital rights usage, which is huge. That's called digital rights reporting. That's AKA fair use. So you can use mm -hmm. Michael Jackson and right. Mickey Mouse and earn from it, be rewarded for it. And then at the end of the day, this curated stream, unlike another, is an NFT. Mm -hmm. So the whole podcast itself is a unique report by the user. And it's completely original, it's completely patented, it's completely locked down. So nice. the idea here is that we've created a uh, broadcast network that's equal 
to the production qualities of an NBC in your pocket and, and, and give you the validation as a, as a curator. How many people are great curators? Maybe they don't make content, but they got great taste. Right. When I was a kid, right. we had the mixtape. It was a mixtape. If ever you had a mixtape and you had to mix all the good radio songs right. together, you funny because you'd hear the you'd hear the radio DJ get cut off at the end. You know, now I wish I heard the DJs that were you know saying things. I think, it's I, think saying, but, I think we all have a friend who is very good at such things. Yes, who knows yeah. how to curate the right content and just oh, isn't that and that's how you respect people. That's how the DJ started. Mm-hmm. The DJ saved my life. That's a real thing because the DJ is tapped into the feel and the motions and the emotions of the people and he curates or she curates the, the emotions to bring it to the table. And curation is so important. It's, 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 you know, creating original content by all means is dynamic and awesome. Yet mm-hmm. curating it is, is almost equal to and, and, and fun, right? <laughs> So if we can pay people for this and give it a, a lifestyle of where, you know, I heard a story that in Africa, uh, you know, hard times there, the, 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 the big um, job to do or career is obviously farming, but the men can't make the money on farming, but they can play some game on some like, you know, called farm aid or some whatever farm something. And um, they're making, they're making like 140 bucks a month on it. Right. But, you know, the living wage is 110, 120, whatever the story is, they're able to make their living off of doing something technological. OK, well, what right. Popology's dream is, is to infuse Popology as a lifestyle so that when you build your podcast, use your Internet services as you, you normally do. Right. You can take a break from it, from the intention you put into it and now go experience life more productively with mm. our intentional time on the internet being more uh, more prolific and more uh, rewarding. more about self-expression once you start expressing yourself it certainly yeah. brings out a difference in us and i was watching one of your videos and i came across a statement that you gave is apology is not about mass opinion it's about personal opinion and i found it so fascinating because it got stuck with me and yeah. i personally believe that self-expression is a very powerful tool for human transformation Thank you, Africa. Yeah, I like that. Um, thank you for, for recognizing that. I say some nice one-liners once in a while. <laughs> um, I mean it, though, is that the individual is, is, is so unique. I could tell you a story, and you could go to tell someone else, and honestly, it would be completely different to some. It would have your nuance to it. Mm-hmm. And nuance is much is is as is heavy as a brick. It's not subtle. It's it's the it's the the way you know. I always had this philosophy of you know you're wearing a blue shirt from what I can identify. My eyes see blue, and I see the tone, and how I see the tone blue for you could be my yellow, right? So we really, we don't know until you're able to brain, you know, neurons that you're, you know, I, but even then, so the conversation is, is what we see in each other. It, 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 you know, I, it's, I disapprove when people say what I'm thinking, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you, mm, you can't track that. You, you, you can try. I mean, we are a lot alike and we're very and there is an importance to that yet there's there's an individuality that is so unique and and it's important not to not to cover over that to to bury it with other people's uh judgments or you gotta Mm -hmm. explore we have one chance on this planet okay and we're our lifespan is you know 80 to 100 years if you're lucky 
So why not make it count? Why not? My, since I was a little boy, I wanted to be an inventor. And I didn't know why, what, really, because everything's really kind of invented. But right. the word popology hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm like, I can't. And, and it, it lends itself to the popologist, right? Popologist right. is a science and spiritually minded creative professional seeking to I love define, that. seeking to define the collective and true landscape of popular the true landscape of popular okay what what's your favorite motorcycle royal enfield who is it royal enfield Roy, royal nt i don't know that one royal enfield okay, okay um so so and i would say for me it's harley davidson Okay. Now they say Harley Davidson is what they call a cult brand. People say they love it and they don't even have one, right? They can't mm -hmm. even probably afford one. So true popular is, is something we should still all try to find what that measurement is, who, you know, and it'll change. It'll always change. You know, as soon as right. the kids find out that we all love, you know, the time is it six o'clock, they'll like, oh, I like 12 o'clock. You know, just because. So it'll never stay stagnant, but we do have to track it. We we have to give respect to our humanity and know our information and not leave it up to the government or the faiths to do that. Right. It's our job. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree that it keeps changing always. Right. Now talking about the uh, NFTs. So I was looking at your there was when I was researching, I got to know that there's an NFT book of pop our yes, audience yes, would love to know yes. about it ah okay well here it is right here oh you have it <laughs> yeah you know what's in it okay. it's what you put in it interesting so no it's a um the popology book of pop was sort of an idea that i had when uh in 2018 to create a fan portal for, for news agencing, uh, you know, people who meet Steven Tyler or meet Madonna or whatever and, and create a fan portal that people can contribute to the fan portal and, and beef up the profile of Steven Tyler uh, mm -hmm. when after meeting him. So, or, 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 so the idea is, is I've assembled a, uh, it's, it's really an aggregation portal, fan portal that a user controls the page, okay? It's not a copyright issue because it's aggregation. It's like Wikipedia, right? right. So, but Wikipedia is not on the blockchain and you can, add, you can add details to a post on Wikipedia. It has to be approved, of course, right? It has to be true, has to be correct. So, um, so the book of pop, popologist.org, is a site where you can upload, you can create a post of your favorite artist and, and dump all kinds of content about that. And then mm -hmm. you get uh, rewards as, and I mint it for free for their user and they control it. So mm -hmm. what happens is, is, but it has to have good information, it has to has, it can't, and, and you don't wanna like jump people off the page. You can include links as a report, but we wanna, you know, I wanna hear what the users premises. It's got to be an original story. Like if you were to do a story, it's your story, right? right. So it starts the page. So, so it basically is an NFT of curation and aggregation of anything about that artist on one page. So it's the link that's the NFT. Well, the link, I mint it on waves, but it's minted. Mm -hmm. The page is minted. You follow? And then, and then the user base, whoever controls that page, controls it and then it gets uh, auctioned off. Somebody else buys it for our Popology coin, by the way, and then they have to buy it for double the price. So say say somebody makes a, I just made one for Ed Hopper. Ed Hopper's the fine artist. So say yes. that, that um, page aggregated goes for, I just did one for Slash too. So let's say Slash, he's more popular today. Slashes might sell for 30 coins, right? We have five dollar coins, so five times thirty, whatever. So, um, so somebody would buy the control for thirty coins, and mm -hmm. then they would have to add the new the new controller would have to add whatever details they like about Slash, increase the value in data, 
in data. That's what it's about, the aggregation of the data. And then the next person, they can add the sentence, that is all they need to add, but technically a block of information. And then um, someone else has to buy it from them for uh, double the price. So that's 60 tokens, 60 coins. So then the other person that got it bought from them could actually buy it back, but they have to buy it back for double. And so what happens is, is people can buy it back from each other and it raises the and price. And the trading happens. So then when, when the, co the coin is worth, say, 200 million coins, just put it in out there, now Slash has an opportunity to sign the card to authenticate it. And now the user who's last holding the potato gets, uh, gets half of the coin and mm -hmm. Slash gets the other half for his charity. And then Popology only makes a transaction fee. That's it. Right. So it's a, it's really a charitable information ledgering uh, use case of NFT uh, creation. And right. that's it. And nobody's doing that, actually. That's it's interesting. Really, really, yeah, it's a fan. Please sign up. And, you know, and oh, and here's another thing. Anyone who signs up and uh, actually I will create an NFT of you as a co the Coin Republic interview um, popologist and when this brand goes public people are going to want to buy your you know your trading card page because it's got all your details what you like what you what you don't like whatever and then the same thing happens because every popologist is going to be just as just as iconic as the celebrities we're servicing i can you have my word on that wow what do you think my card is uh, going to go <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I absolutely love this. And while I was researching, while talking to you, oh, wow. <laughs> He's the carrot. You seen, have you seen the uh, mascot, the popologist, the first pop up character? You probably haven't I've seen, seen This is the yeah, character. Seen You've mm -hmm. seen it. Okay. I've seen there you it. go. Lovely. All right, Joe. Okay. It was lovely talking to you. Lovely to know you and about apology. And I think I've had a wonderful conversation here, got to learn so much about you. And I'm sure our audience also learned a lot from you. Can I add one more detail of uh, a little plug? Um, we have a private sale of our, um, of our Popology coin, right? I mean, we have an act, we have two coins. We have an in-app token for the in-app app that we're building called Pop Token. The Popology coin is a private sale premium coin that we're selling for five each dollars each. And I would recommend that anybody who's interested in seeing that our brand is going somewhere, they can buy it. Cause we're not, we're, we've been around for plenty of years, 11 years mm -hmm. in this company. Um, and our platform is going to be able to trade the coins that you win on Amazon because we're using Amazon servers. So, and we'll bring on other partners as well. So the, the, the coin to answer one of your questions is will be tradable for merchandise on various outlet platforms. Cause you know, that's popular. That's it. That's Lovely. All Thank right, Joe, it was fantastic right. talking to you. And I would love to connect with you one more time sometime in the future, looking forward. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. See ya. Thank you. you.